So, good morning, my name is Yaroslav Soprano, and I'm a PhD student of Richard Kutner at the Faculty of Physics at the University of Warsaw. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. And the topic of my today's speech is the decisive role of long-term autocorrelation of interview times on financial markets. Uh, firstly, I would like to introduce what I do. I investigate the price dynamics mostly by calculating the autocorrelation of price changes and the autocorrelation of price changes absolute values. And uh, what is autocorrelation? Autocorrelation is the correlation of a signal with a delayed copy of itself as a function of delay. So the autocorrelation of uh, price changes tells us if the trend is preserved. So the positive autocorrelation uh, is a function which tells us if after the price increase we should expect that the price will increase again. And the negative autocorrelation means that there is a negative feedback, so uh, the price increase should be followed by the price decrease and the price will return to the previous value. When I talk about autocorrelation of price change absolute values, it will mean something different because price changes absolute values is uh, a measure of how big the changes are, so it's kind of measure of volatility. And uh, in this case, autocorrelation is a function which tells us if the big changes are followed by another big changes or small changes. Uh, and uh, I talk a lot about price, but I have to define it somehow. So uh, for me, the definition of price is the price of the last transaction. So the price can change only when a transaction occurs, and it's constant in the time between transactions. The change uh, happens immediately, and the new price is the price of the, this new transaction. So the perfect model to, to the perfect process to model is it is continuous time random walk. Uh, here we have the, the plot of uh, example realization. Uh, firstly, it's a random walk, so the price changes are random variables, but we need uh, an average quantity, so we need the times between, between these changes, so it happens in continuous time. The, the price changes occur instant, instantaneously at any given time, and times between price changes, uh, called waiting times, are random variables. So we have these two quantity switch that, that describes our process, the changes and the times between changes. Uh, and I said that uh, correlation, autocorrelation is the function of, it, of delay, but uh, I will use two different delays in, in my uh, presentation. Uh, if uh, the step autocorrelation means that I use a step as delay. So, for example, if I consider only price changes or only waiting time, so one quantity, it's just the correlation uh, between uh, the, the price change and the next price change. And when I talk about the whole process, the continuous time random walk, uh, it, it's, I write wrong heat time autocorrelation. I, I will call it just autocorrelation. It's the correlation of the uh, price change with the price change which can happen in the next 10 seconds or in some time. And uh, so we have process and I have to somehow describe it. And moment, moments of the process, usually the first and the second one, and uh, the correlation are used to describe it. So that's why I will talk about this. I will talk so much about how the correlation. Uh, the basic canonic model is uh, was introduced by Montreal and Weiss, two physicists, and it has two basic assumptions. First is that there is no memory. Next price change doesn't depend on the previous one. So it means that there is no step autocorrelation between price changes and between waiting times. And the second assumption is that uh, price changes and waiting times distribution are independent. So it can happen that we will wait a long time for the next price change, but it doesn't mean that this change should be big or small. All the price changes came from the same distribution. But if you look at the empirical data, we cannot use this model exactly for financial data because there are a lot of memories. So the this memory is when we check autocorrelation of price changes, uh, we see that there is 
from one step uh, memory. So empirical data suggests one step memory for price changes, and but we can easily insert this memory into our continuous time random mock uh, model and uh, and solve it. But the memory that you typically see is the beta span. So you have the yes, it, it's exactly this memory. It's beta span. Uh, okay, so here is the first graph, and from now on, I will have almost only graphs. So here starts the more interesting part of my presentation. Uh, the blue line is autocorrelation of price changes, and we see uh, this, that this empirical autocorrelation is negative. In the case quite, in the case quite fast, it's exponential decaying. Uh, it is for one of the Polish stocks, and uh, it's for the second data. Uh, and we see that the, the model, the green lines, it's this one-step memory model, it explains quite well these autocorrelations. And uh, it was already done, and what I did for my master thesis is I checked if this model is more universal, so if it can also describe a number of quantities. So in my case, it was the autocorrelation of price changes absolute values. But uh, the red line is the autocorrelation of price changes absolute values, empirical one, and we see that it's positive. In the case, much slower, it's a power law decaying, and uh, the purple line is the, the, the theoretical autocorrelation from one step memory model, and it does not explain the empirical data, empirical results. So the question is, what else should I input into my model, which assumptions to, to make it better, to make it explain the empirical uh, data better. So, uh, the uh, autocorrelation of, of price changes was included, so here, here are the plots of step autocorrelations, autocorrelation of waiting times, uh, the blue line, and the price changes absolute values, the green line. It's in the logarithmic scale, and we see that graphs are close to straight lines, so uh, it means that these are power law memories. So probably these memories can... So these, these are seconds? Well, it's it's uh, steps. Step. Step. It's steps of correlations. Uh, so probably these memories can explain the empirical data, and we should include these memories into our model. But here we have two questions. Firstly, why, when uh, explaining autocorrelation of price changes, we we don't have to include any of these memories, and the, the result is quite well. And the second question is: Is one of these memories more important than the other, or or we have to include both memories to to model to recreate the results, like for the empirical data? So, uh, going back to autocorrelation of price changes. The black line is the, the empirical uh, results, but the red line is the situation when uh, I, I make one simulation. Uh, from empirical data, we have two quantities, price changes and waiting times, corresponding waiting times. So we have a series of price changes, like plus one euro, euro minus one euro, etc., and uh, waiting times, like 12 seconds, 5 seconds, and so on. And what I did, I leave the empirical price changes, so I also leave all the correlation between price changes, and I completely randomly shuffle the waiting times. So I destroy all the correlation between waiting times. And we see that the result of this uh, simulation, the red line, is very close to the empirical one. So it's, it means that we don't have to consider the correlation between waiting times to properly model the autocorrelation of price changes. And uh, that the considering only correlation between price changes is, is quite enough to, to explain this autocorrelation. And that's why it, it's quite easy to, to model this. And the third and the fourth situation is uh, are the cases when I shuffle the price changes, so I uh, destroy all the correlation between price changes and so the, the result correlation is, autocorrelation is zero. But here is uh, another plot, it's the autocorrelation of price change absolute values, and it's in the logarithmic scale. Uh, the colors are the same, so the black line is the situation for empirical data. Here we see that it's close to the straight line, so it's a power law, okay? 
the red line is situation when uh, I also leave the empirical price changes, so I leave all the correlation between price changes and also I leave all the correlation between price changes absolute values, but I shuffle the waiting time, so I destroy the correlation between waiting times. And we see that this autocorrelation also the case like a power law, but it the case faster, the, the slope is different. So considering only correlation between price changes absolute values is not enough to, to explain to model correctly the, the this autocorrelation. The, the blue line is the <coughs> result when I shuffle both price changes and waiting time, so I destroy all the step correlations and in this case, in the case faster than the uh, power law, it's exponential decaying, here is just the noise. But the most interesting situation is this green line. It's the situation when I shuffle the price changes, so I destroy all the correlation between price changes and also I destroy all the correlation between price changes absolute values, but I leave the empirical waiting times and the correlation between waiting times. And in this case, we see that this line decays exactly the same like a critical one. The slopes are the same. Uh, so the, the behavior is, is quite the same. Of course, it's a little lower because I destroy a correlation between price changes of some values. But uh, if you look for the behavior for bigger times, we see that the correlation between waiting times are crucial in this case and we should include them to the model firstly uh, and then this correlation are more important than the correlation between price and absolute values. Uh, and it was quite interesting for me and uh, as I said before, for price, uh, the model for autocorrelation of price changes, uh, the, the model was one step memory. With one step memory and it was quite well. So maybe we can somehow use only one step memory uh, to to model this uh, uh, to model somehow this memory for waiting times and get the, the model which can reproduce the results like for the empirical data. And actually, what I did, I, I tried to show that no, we we can't. We have to use long range memory, and it's the only way. So. Uh, I wanted to show that if we somehow break the short range correlations and leave only the long range correlations between waiting times, that uh, data transformed like this will reproduce the results like for the empirical data. So, so the question here is how to break only short, short range correlations of waiting times? Uh, and what we do is what we did. We shuffle them in non-overlapping window. So here's an example of shuffling in windows of size 3. So here is the series of empirical data for waiting times, so the times between price changes. And I take the first three one and shuffle them. I take the next three and shuffle them randomly, and I uh, repeat this procedure for all the waiting times. So here is our transformed data. And I calculate the data correlation of process with uh, this uh, waiting times. Uh, if you look, we see if you look, for example, for one step memory, we see that it, it's destroyed. It's uh, the the waiting times are not in the right places. But if we look, we look in the long range, like for the memory in 30 steps, we see the corresponding waiting times are quite in the same places. So. I can say that this procedure kind of destroys short range color, color, correlations and leave only the long range ones. Uh, and here are the results for autocorrelation of price changes of those values. It's in the logarithmic scale again. And the empirical results for the empirical data. And the red line is here is the size of the window. So if we shuffle the waiting times in the windows of size 2, we see that the result is quite uh, quite the same. So destroying this one step memory between waiting times and leaving the, the, the only the longer dependencies is is enough to completely reproduce the data, the results like for the empirical data. 
here is the result for uh, windows window of size 10. And really, we can see that at the beginning, maybe in the case a little faster, but but uh, for the bigger time, the slope is the same. Uh, here are the, the even bigger windows, like one the size of 100 and 500. And we see that at uh, the beginning, for short time, is it the case faster, but for the bigger times, also the slopes are the same as the for empirical data. And it, it was quite amazing for me that taking the waiting times and shuffle them in the window of size 100, so destroying all the short range correlations and leaving only the, the, the long range correlations, so leaving only the structure of waiting times, is uh, that data transformed like this is enough to quite well reproduce the results like for the empirical data to get the, the same behavior of uh, the same phase of the day, the same slope. But your best result are for shuffling in dual time. This is just the data spread. So you're focusing on that. Uh, yes, but, but for, let's say, one window of size 100, we, we also get quite the, the good results. And, uh, because you also have a correlation. You are, in a sense, uh, and there are resulting market microstructure in which you, you know that this flux of, uh, let's say, um, market order with the same type of, uh, of uh, uh, direction, which means the fact that you, if you are at big or dusk, I mean, this can last uh, also 10 or 20 or 50 uh, ticks. So, and you are detecting. Uh, but uh, it's for uh, transactions, so it's data. Yeah. So it's not for, yeah. it's for the data. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I suggest that you put the, your result in relation with some result from market microstructure. Uh, OK, but it's still for me, it's quite amazing that the shopping the waiting times in Windows size 10 recreates the, data, the empirical results much better than including all the uh, correlation between step, correla step auto correlation between price changes of absolute values. Because it's the, oh, sorry, sorry. It's the, the last case, is the, this pink line. I wrote here the, the window of size 10,000, but actually in, our, in my case, the, there are around 2,000 transactions per day. So in this case, the window is bigger than the than the number of trades per day. So we shuffle all the waiting times. So I destroy both the short correlation and uh, the long range correlation. So I, I destroy the structure structure of waiting times. And in this case, the, we see that this auto correlation decays faster. The, the slope is different than for for the empirical data. Uh, okay, so I have last two minutes, so it's perfect time for conclusions. The first one is that step correlation between price changes are crucial dependencies while, while considering the autocorrelation of price changes. It sounds a little trivial, but what is important is that the step correlation between waiting times are quite unimportant in this case, and we don't have to include them into the model to, to explain. Uh, the second point is that step correlation between waiting times are crucial dependencies while considering the autocorrelation of price changes absolute values. And it was for me quite interesting that the correlation between waiting times are more important than the correlation between price changes absolute values in for autocorrelation of price changes absolute values. And the last point is that uh, long memory of waiting times is crucial for correct modeling price dynamics. So probably we cannot use some quite easy to solve short range model, but we have to use uh, long range uh, memories to explain uh, correctly price dynamics. And uh, as the member of organizing committee of Econophysics Colloquium 2017, uh, I would like you to I would like to remind you that. There is this event. It will be held in, in Warsaw. And uh, I would like to invite you to visit our web page because there are all the informations. And so thank you for your attention. Thank you for your presentation. So now it's time to 
to the questions, comments, yes? Yeah, uh, so uh, just curiosity actually. Uh, can you go back to the first chart in which uh, before uh, goes? The uh, paragraph? Yeah. I think, sorry, uh, next one. Okay. Yeah. So you say that the green curve fits much better the black one than the red one. Okay, in that, I mean that behavior of this for the long, uh, for the bigger times and how it decays. Oh, okay. okay, if, if we talk about just the amplitude and we look at it in the linear scale, of course, for the first 10 seconds, the, the red line will be closer. And But I look, how, how does it decay, the slope of the cane? Yeah, but so even, even with the slope, it, I don't know, just by looking at that, I would say that depending on the, on the minimum x value that you use to fit the data, you will probably have I don't know, I would say that you will have like a big difference between the black and the green slope or the red and the black slope. So do you have any number, just to, to give a comparison? Like do you have the, um, the value of the values of the exponents? Uh, so the slopes. Uh, yeah. Okay, I don't have Q, but uh, uh, it's for the one stock of the, from the Polish market and I did these graphs for another stocks from Polish markets and also for the Japanese market and, and the results quite the same that these slopes are quite quite the same and that this this slope was was different but uh, i actually didn't make uh, any fees from now but because also they come from london but we have no permission to public presentation uh, so we give this polish uh, but it's very similar for small stock markets uh, intermediate and large markets so by universal, universal behavior. Did you try American markets? Did you try American markets? American, not yet, but as I said, I look at the Japanese market and the, the result quite was the same and for the uh, London uh, market it, it was also quite quite good. But for the London market we have a shorter uh, data, so, so the variance is were bigger here and what what was the average in interim time? Just to have a feeling. Second uh, yes, it was one, one second data. Uh, yes, so so the first I mean I mean if you if if you estimate the average interim time in your uh, time series, mm. what is the value? One one second um, um, then in, second value in in real time. Mm -hmm. Because you, you did a lot of analysis in is that, is that second? Yes, it's, it's in the seconds. 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 So, uh, <coughs> so in a sense, uh, because you know, nowadays there is a lot of uh, algorithm trading. So you have a lot of, you have typically interleaving time of okay. No, no, I only have the data for for one second. Uh, and then, no, no, I can't so look. It, they are not uh, really transaction time. It is the second when the transaction occurred. Uh, you have already one second. Uh, yes, yes, I have only one second. But, but it was for is the Polish uh, for <coughs> the Polish market that the mean time between transaction is something like several seconds, like fifteen or twenty. So it's quite good. I uh, of course if, if I look at the for the uh, London data, like for bar bar, bar place and the, the mean the average time between transaction is around one second of course the, the one second data will be it won't be correct to, to use it mm. but in this case uh, there are not as many the, the, all, almost all transactions occur in the different seconds so one second data will be you know. probably it's was you connected to the previous one because i wanted to ask exactly the same because you said that there is approximately 10,000 transactions in a day on no, average? No, 2,000. 2,000? Yeah, this window is bigger than the maximum number of transactions per day. Okay, but, but it means like one hour is for 3,600 3, seconds, so it's really like every, on average every 10, 15 seconds something happens. Yes. Because I think what, what you should have shown at the, at the very beginning was probably the distribution of these waiting times, because then if you show this, this autocorrelation function of, well, when, it, when you show that it's like negative and it exponentially goes to zero, and then you shuffle it and it still remains the same, the question is whether this is not just caused by the fact that if, if you have second data, or based on seconds, then even if you shuff, shuffle them time-wise, if you take the waiting times, 
then still you will have relatively long segments of time where, where the price is constant, right? So you'll have zero, 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 zero as the price change. And this is exactly what creates this negative autocorrelation. Like if, if you have if you have these bouncy processes that are zero, then something happens, zero, then something happens, that's that's negative autocorrelation. It's curious. Yes, yes, much. it does this this uh, this speed as bounce is is the process so. with we, we yeah, but, but, but it's, that, that's not bit as bounce, right? It's like that's that's given by the by the in nature of, of the data in a way. It's not like oh, in the millisecond data, it's something different, right? But but if you have based on seconds and it's still there, the question is whether it's just not because of that. But it's not. And, and one comment, you, uh, probably this is not a question. It's more of a comment. There is a lot of a lot of research on this topic in, in in finance as well, in financial econometrics. It's just not called waiting times, but durations. Mm -hmm. As, as so always, in, in, in econophysics and in economics, it's called differently. So, so probably check uh, check what's done there because there's a lot, a lot of stuff done there. And, and like the, the mainstream view, like economics mainstream view now, is really that it's not volatility that's important that much, but it's more these durations, the yeah. waiting times that create the volatility, which creates the price changes. So it's there as well. So it might be interesting to see what has been done there and try to put it together, whether you're not doing the same thing. Thank you. Thank you. Very, uh, very nice. Yeah, that's good. We, we still have three questions. I think you have a question. No, it's right now. So we have a question there. Yeah. Sorry. Just thinking uh, of what Tom was saying. Is there any particular reason why you didn't look at American markets? I'm just curious. Ah, uh -huh, I, I just uh, don't have the data yet. I, I had okay. for the Polish stock and for for Japanese. Okay. Okay. All right, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> around around I think it's 15 years ago, we we published some analysis of uh, high frequency data at that time um, and also some very old 19th century Irish data using a continuous time round the wall. But, 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 that, I forget how it was published now, but I'll find out. But, but sometime later, we did some work looking at, that it took account of the correlations that could exist between price changes and time changes. So we developed a kind of formalism that allowed you to look at a sort of random variable that took account of both of those changes. And it seemed to, <coughs> I'm just looking at the paper we dropped on the archive on here at the moment, but it seemed to offer a slight improvement in looking at the data. I wondered if you had looked at or thought of the possibility that there was a correlation between price and time. Yes, I, I looked at that this and, and I know that there is a correlation between waiting time and the price change, but mm. for the if the waiting time is short, that the price change should also be smaller than the average. But uh, I think that in the case uh, of uh, out correlation for price change absolute values, when this memory is a power of the K, that it, it maybe it's it's. it's I think it's not very important in this case that that when, when I look at for the, the slopes and how it behaves it for the longer time, it, it, it maybe we, I mean, we should probably more careful. Yeah, for it, this uh, okay, and so it's the reason why uh, this uh, graphs didn't start at the same point for the one second because uh, like the red line starts higher than the uh, black line because when I shuffle the the waiting times. Oh, yeah, so it can happen then the big change uh, occurs after the one second, so it, it, it's why this autocorrelation is higher. I mean, intuitively, we were, I guess, thinking a long time change could imply a large price change afterwards. Yeah, but, but this small times maybe lead to small price okay, changes. But I look for this Polish data, yeah. and the, the uh, um, Function was logarithm, so mm -hmm. it, it it changes at the beginning for the really short time, but uh, truly for the bigger times it, it was almost uh, the straight time, which is it, it was uh, average, it was the same constant. Okay. So, so I believe it is, sorry, I, I believe it, it will change more for the short times because the, this mm -hmm. uh, this effect is stronger for the short times than probably for the long times. Maybe, maybe uh, I. Then if I will check it someday. Another question or comment? <coughs> well, if you are okay, so thank you very much again for your presentation.
So now it's time to have a break. No.